You know, in Matthew 22, when Jesus was asked, by the Pharisees and Sadducees, he says, One of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, in, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus gives an example when he, when he asked, which now of these three do you think was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves because he talks about a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the morrow or the next day when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever you spend more when I come again I will repay you. And Jesus asked him, Now which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell amongst thieves? Okay, well, in, in Matthew 25, really gives, Jesus gives a really extensive um, description of this but he starts it out talking about the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods unto one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability or his own ability and straightway took his journey or immediately took his journey then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made another five talents and likewise he had received two also gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants comes and reckons with them. meaning to to settle the accounts of the money that he left with them the talents that he gave he left with them and, he, and, he, and you notice that he says 
to every man according to his own ability, his several ability, his own ability, and straightway took his journey in verse 15 of Matthew 25. Okay, so here, after a long time, the Lord of those servants comes and reckons with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought an, another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained another two talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard or austere man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not strawed or uh, scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. Lo, here you have that is yours his lord answered and said unto him you wicked and slothful servant you knew that i reap where i sowed not and gathered where i had not scattered seed you ought us there you should have therefore put the money to the exchangers And then at my coming, I would have received my own with usury or, or interest. You should have, therefore, for this reason, to have put the money to the exchangers, the bankers, and then at my coming, I should have received mine own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give to him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away that which he has. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be reap, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you got to see that he says slothful, lazy servant. And that's the writer of Hebrews is talking about uh, in chapter 5, verse 11, speaking to him about Jesus as the high priest after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron. And saying, we have many things we want to say unto you, but hard to be uttered or put into words, seeing you are become dull of hearing and the, and the Greek word actually carries the idea of laziness and an unwillingness to listen a hardness and this also goes back to Mark chapter 4 22 through 25 when Jesus said you that have ears to hear pay attention take heed to what you hear for the measure you use to hear he said it shall be measured back to you and more shall be given. More what ability to hear and understand shall be given. But to him that has not what a willingness to listen. Even what he has shall be taken away from him. And I'm telling you this, these have to do with one another. And increasing the talent that we are given and Paul speaks of this when he 
writes in Ephesians when he says, When Jesus ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts under men. And we got to understand that according to the measure of grace given to me, Paul says all the time. And it has everything to do with faith because when you when you uh, when you uh, read Second Corinthians uh, ten, look what he's saying here, because he says. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh or according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, the destruction, the destroying of strongholds, spiritual strongholds in our mind that we battle against spiritual strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge or punish every disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled or filled up. Talking about coming to the knowledge of the truth or receiving the knowledge of the truth that Second Timothy 3, 7 and some are ever learning never able to come to or uh, the writer of Hebrews in uh, 10, 22 saying uh, or 1026 saying if if we willfully sin after we've received the knowledge of the truth there remains no more sacrifice for sin but a willing uh, certain fearful looking for of judgment so and but here if we cut it's about faith it's about as he says in Romans 1 16 and 17 I'm not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ for therein therein in the good news of Jesus Christ the gospel of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God revealed from faith unto faith as it is written the just shall live by faith so Because look at here, he says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number of, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reached not unto you but for we are come as far to you also in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ not boasting of things without our measure that is of other men's labors but having hope when your faith is increased when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly and this has everything to do with that measure of grace that each one of us is given and that Jesus expects an increase of when he returns and let me finish in Matthew 25 because going on from that Paul or Jesus expounds on that he says when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and be sh and he shall separate 
them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and you you got to understand too the significance of that is that the aggressiveness of a goat and the passiveness of a sheep and He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came unto me then shall the righteous answer him saying lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink when did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you or when did we see you sick or in prison and came unto you and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, as much as you have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or th a thirst, or a stranger, and naked, and or sick, in prison, and not minister unto you? minister unto you then shall he answer them and saying verily i say unto you inasmuch as you did it not unto one of the least of these you did it not unto me and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal You know, and um, let me, I want to refer to one more uh, thing that really does touch on this that Paul wrote. Because he's talking about the fruits of your righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Because he's talking about this I say, which he which sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, also sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. For every man, according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace, favor, abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he is dispersed abroad, he is given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. 
being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causes which causes through us thanksgiving to God for the ministration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God whilst by the experiments of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men and by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. You know, I am, I am certain that, as Paul said in Philippians, he said, I've learned in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. Philippians 4.11 He says Finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of a good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care for me has flourished again. Wherein you were also careful but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to ab be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Notwithstanding you have done what well done, that you did communicate with my afflictions. He says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church, no assembly communi communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute the saints in Jesus Christ, the brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. You know, and, and this is exactly what Jesus was talking about. And, and... Every day, I mean, believers 
go through hard times, they go through high times, and it may be very well that a believer is going through a trial, a temptation in regards to being in need. And it comes down to the love of God is like Paul is saying, your care for me has flourished again. You know, and it has to do with increasing the fruits of our righteousness, as he said in uh, 2 Corinthians 9. And this goes back to what Jesus was teaching. You know, as uh, I'm going to end it with this is pretty much uh, on the closing of Acts 20 and whoever it was that followed so much of Paul's ministry and his his trials and tribulations and uh, he says uh Because this is right before he's going back to Jerusalem. He says, And now behold, I know that you all among whom I have preached or proclaimed the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the assembly of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my depart, departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you and spare not the flock. And this goes back to what Jesus taught in one of the Gospels, I believe it's Matthew, when he says, Beware of wolves that come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He says, and, and it's talking about someone with a rapacious appetite, never content, always in want. This is what Paul was talking about. He and and he goes on, he says, Sweet water and bitter water don't come forth from the same source simultaneously. He says, Neither do you gather figs from a briar branch, nor briars from a fig tree. He says, Therefore, by their by their fruits you shall know them. He says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, for this reason, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance 
among all them which her sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities to them that were with me. I have showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all, and they all swept, wept sore, and they all wept sore, and fell upon Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they should see his face no more. And they, accompanied, and they accompanied him unto the ship. You know, and I'll end up with that. Amen.